Welcome back everyone. Today we're gonna to continue talking about manipulating Git history and cover how to delete or remove commits from your history. You've probably seen the animation happening on your screen and that's gonna go on throughout the whole video and it's gonna reflect the current state of the Git tree as I'm issuing the actual commands. Now, delete is a destructive action with a higher chance of conflict. So stick with me until the end because I need to tell you about how to handle those when they inevitably come up. Let's start by taking a look at the current state of our repository. As you can see, I've got a couple of commits on master and I've also split off to work on a feature branch that I'm calling my branch. On that branch, I've got three commits. I'll talk to you about two ways to delete a commit. First, how to delete your most recent commit and second, how to delete any commit in your history. So to delete my most recent commit, I'm just gonna run git reset dash dash hard head tilde one. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna tell git that I wanna remove any changes that's one back from my head commit or my most recent commit. And everything in that working directory will also be deleted. So be careful with that. Now, if you simply wanna undo your last commit instead of just wipe it or erase it entirely, you can use that same command, but instead change hard to soft. So I can run git reset dash dash soft. And what that's gonna do is it's going to undo my last commit and move those changes back into my staging area. Git reset soft is a non-destructive action. So if you're not sure which to use, I'd recommend going with that. All right, the easy examples out of the way. Let's get on to the more juicy examples. Let's say I wanna delete a commit that's farther back. And let's say I wanna delete that second commit on my branch. For that, we're gonna to need to reach to interactive rebase. Before we go any further, a quick disclaimer, I'd like to caution you if you're thinking about dropping commits from your history, only do this on local chains that haven't yet been pushed to a shared repository. If you need to undo a commit that's on a shared branch, or you need a safer alternative to outright removing a commit, then I would consider git revert, which is like reversing the effects of a commit non-destructively. I have a whole video that goes into git revert and that just popped up in the top right corner of your screen. Check it out, it's a really cool tool. All right, let's get back to deleting that second commit. To get started, I'm gonna type git rebase dash i, and that dash i means interactive mode. And I'm gonna pass the argument head tilde two. What this is gonna tell git is I wanna manipulate the last two commits back from head. Now, you could sub in any number here. You could do two or three or four, depending on how far back you wanna manipulate. I'll just hit enter. And when this runs, Git will pop us into our default terminal text editor. In my case, it's Vim and probably yours as well. At the top of your file, it's gonna see it grabbed the last two commits and added them right there at the top. The rest of this file is just one big comment that acts as some documentation about what other commands are available to you while using interactive rebase. Now, they're really interesting. If you want more information, click the link that just popped up in the top right corner of your screen. You can think of interactive rebase like a list of commands that will run on each of the commits specified here at the top in the order that they're specified. Each line contains first the command that will run second followed by the commit that the command will actually run on. Think of deleting as not removing a commit from a tree, but more of rewinding back to a specific point in time and replaying changes without applying the changes in the commit that you specified. So in this case, at the top of your screen, you can see that I'm gonna change the word pick to drop in front of that commit that I wanna drop. And when git go ahead and does the interactive rebase, when it gets to that commit, it's going to not replay the changes introduced by that commit and then move on, essentially removing that commit from the tree. So I changed pick to drop, and then I'm gonna just save and close the file. In this case, it's escape colon WQ. And when I do this, Git will begin rebasing. It'll start with that first commit and then to work its way through the list, dropping that commit we don't want, and then replaying the changes introduced by that first commit. But you need to understand one thing. Even though we only dropped that second commit, Interactive Rebase went back and replayed the last two commits. What that means is even though we dropped that second commit, the latest commit was also rewritten and replaced by an identical commit, but with a different reference. So don't delete any commits that are on a shared branch. Lastly, there's a higher chance for conflicts when you're running git delete, and there's a higher chance that they'll happen during this operation. So if I rewind here and try to drop instead that third commit back from head, you're gonna see that I'm gonna get a conflict. Now, if I run git status to get some more information about the conflict, you can see that it's telling me that it can't apply the changes from the second commit back from head because they're based on a file that was introduced in that third commit, which we just removed. This may be a little confusing and I'd say it's possible to fix this type of error, but if you get a conflict during the drop operation, I would say it's a sign that you should be using another operation like git revert that's less destructive. So if you find yourself in this situation, just run git rebase dash dash abort and that'll stop the interactive rebase process and give you a chance to use something better like revert instead. Unlike other types of conflicts, trying to fix delete conflicts is probably gonna get you in over your head unless you really know what you're doing. So I would recommend just not. And if you'd like to learn more about manipulating other parts of Git history, like rewording commit messages, squashing, reordering, stuff like that, click the link that popped up on your screen. There's also a written article of everything we discussed in the video description. 
But that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.